ஃப்ரண்ட் வரலையா சார் ரமன் சார் ரமன் சார் வரலையா ரொம்ப கம்மியா இருக்கு சார் சார் ஸ்டூடண்ட்ஸ் இப்போ ஜாயின் பண்ணுவாங்க சார் நம்ம ஒரு 2 मिनिट्स வெயிட் பண்ணி அப்புறம் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணுங்க ஓகே வெரி குட் மார்னிங் டு ஒன் அண்ட் ஆல் கேதர்ட் ஹியர் we are gathered together for the proper seminar program on the topic nurturing the graduates on industry readiness organized by ICT academy along with rohini college of engineering and technology and now i welcome our honorable principal dr rajesh for this meeting who is our source of inspiration for on organizing many programs like this i request our beloved principal Dr. Rajesh to address the program. Thank you, Asana Madam, respected chairman in Agencia, respected managing director in Agencia, respected chief financial officer in Agencia, the coordinator of ICT Act of RCT, Dr. Ramanan, Ms. Asana Bibi. APCSE the most respected resource persons of the day mr immanuel and my dear beloved students very good morning to all the first outset i appreciate the efforts taken by rct act to organize more number of the programs for our college for the betterment of our students i am grateful to our chief guest of the day mr immanuel he is a great resource person he is a very rich knowledge how to nurture the students to be ready for the industry he graciously accepted our invitation and make his presence today on behalf of rohini college of engineering and technology and on my own behalf i welcome you sir on this on this morning so my dear friend we we are organizing this kind of the special for you what are the people are doing currently third year this is another one month we will begin the final year the first week of august onwards lot of industry to come to our organization to come to our institute we will recruit to you so you have to equip yourself you have to fit yourself you have to make yourself to be fit to face the test and drive to face the campus right so my dear friend there are a huge gap is there is a huge gap is there between the industry requirement and the academia output we are taking a lot of effort to minimize this gap to fill in this gap my dear friend industry is are expecting to in terms of the skill and is still knowledge skill and another one is the soft skill so you should have a deep knowledge in a particular domain deep knowledge is very very essential how the deep knowledge will come through the deep learning through the deep learning only that deep knowledge will be coming to you so my dear friend please learn with interest please learn with enjoyment then that the object will be very very interesting to you and industries need a practical skills the skill is very 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 important in the earlier days industries as spend lots of lots of money for nurturing the graduates but now industries are not ready to provide any secondary education so after the completion of the degree industries are expecting that you should possess 
certain skills or certain knowledges. My dear friend, if you are from acute branches, you should be equipped with the latest programming skills like the Python. We should be equipped with the emerging area like the cyber security, sector security, machine learning, artificial intelligence, blockchain, etc. These are the skills being needed to get a job in an industry. First of all, we have to pick in which domain we will be working after the year. First, we have to make a plan whether we will prefer the government job or an industry job. If it is an industry job, so we have to pick that whether we may go to the software job or a process industry or a, a manufacturing industry or a service industry or an IT industry. So once we have to fix a minimum goal, that is minimum goal, then only we have to take the steps how to achieve that goal. If we have, if our goal is to join the DCS or CTS or Vibro or Hannibal, etc., so we have to prepare to achieve a job in that kind of industry. So we should have a thorough knowledge in the programming. So my dear friends, don't forget that the programming language is language of the all engineers. That may be a Python, R, C, plus, 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 it is the language. It is the language for all the engineers. So all the engineers should be active with those so, of the programming languages, maybe a Python or maybe a if you would like to move in an electronic industry, you should have a sound knowledge in the microcontrollers. Microcontrollers in the control system area itself. Nowadays, lot of job openings are there. In industry, there are lots of job openings are there. But industries need skilled people. But there is a shortage of skilled people. There is a shortage of skilled people. It is a correct time, it is an optimal time for to you to enhance yourself, to update yourself the latest knowledge, the latest skill preferred by an industry. So my dear friend, now we all are in the lockdown. So because of the, the pandemic period, we all are staying in the home. We are getting lot of time. Don't waste this time. Kindly utilize this time in a fruitful way. Try to enhance yourself with any one of the languages, any one of the programming languages. Try to learn artificial intelligence. Try to learn cyber laws, cyber security, network security. So definitely you will get a great future. I am very much sure that this lecture will be enjoyable to you and it will be very much useful to you. Once again, I thank the resource person of today, Mr. Emmanuel, for spending his previous time with us on that day. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, sir, for your motivating introduction about the program. Now it's the time to introduce our resource person. It is a great honor for me to introduce and welcome our resource person of this power seminar organized by ICT Academy. Today our resource person is Mr. Rees Emanuel, Senior Manager, Max to Digital Private Limited. He has contributed many human resource empowerment activities throughout his career. He got BE AAA degree from Anna University in the year 2009 and he got MBA from Madras University in 2011. He contributed as production in charge in Samrat Hardware Private Limited during the year 2009 to 2010. He worked as HR associate for one and a half years and contributed many human resource development programs 
during the year 2010 to 2011. He worked as HR lead in Atom Corporation for three years during 2011 to 2014. He served as senior executive, associate manager, and manager of human resource department in Pioda Limited Technology. He has highly involved in with the top management activities like recruitment, training and development, business development, fine tuning and implementation of policies, procedures, processes by playing the role as HR generalist. Uh, just to be confirmed, uh, Ramdan sir, am I clear? Yes, sir. My voice clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, done. Yes. So I have a small presentation. So it's a quick presentation that I have. Probably after that, we can have a question and answer session where we can discuss it based on the students' uh, doubts and clarifications. Okay. So just want to reconfirm: is my screen uh, viewable? Yes, visible, visible. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So about about the title, nurturing the graduates on industry readiness. So, as you're aware, I think uh, there's a mix of students, right? If I'm right, uh, second year, third year, and the final year. So, you coming into the job market, you kind of have to equip yourself to get into a right job. So, for that, I just wanted to start off with a small presentation about like how the industry is currently. Uh, this is, of course, the last month's data, April, uh, which is like as you see, uh, the job requirements have gone up slightly for freshers. You know, so that is an increase. But again, if you see the inside. As on April to May, again due to the increase in terms of the uh, positive cases uh, due to this COVID thing, we are seeing a slight dip in terms of the hiring for freshers. But still, yeah, this will change. Uh, as you see, in March to March to April period, it was rising because at that time it was slightly different. So one thing that I wanted to highlight here is like as freshers when you come into the job market, you need to be job ready. You know? So that's one of the major reason I'm just showing you this insight. Of what's the current pattern that's there in the industry? Okay. So coming to the industry, what do where do I start? So when you come into a role, so what are some of the basic skills that you really need to be equipped? So these are some things that I wanted to define because I'm not going to start off with anything specific to a particular role, but rather for any job that you take up, you know, whether it's software development, it could be business development, it could be. Uh, Anything into project management, testing, design, or whatever it is, these are some of the basic skills on which you're going to be evaluated wherever you go, in whichever industry or vertical that you're getting into. So that's one of the reason I'm taking these things for you, so that you can equip. They are trying to shortlist from the major chunk of candidates, but apart from that, they're trying to evaluate your problem-solving skills. Now that is what aptitude is all about. Now, how are you really able to understand the problem statement, and how are you really able to apply your mind and come up with a solution? So that's the primary objective of doing an aptitude round. So this is something that we try to evaluate. Evaluate the reason being is because in your day-to-day -day job activities, it's not always going to be the same thing. No, probably make panna deeda naali ko pannu under the kariya the. So every day there might be different roadblocks or different challenges that will come your way. So at that point of time, you need to really act quickly and come up with a workaround solution so that you can come over it. So that is one of the primary reason. This problem solving skills is something which is very critical in terms of the evaluation process. So this is something that you you can't mug up. You no, know, probably yeah. There is R S Agarwal books and various other things that's available. Uh, don't just try to mug up and try to implement it by your exams. You no, know? rather try to understand the concept behind it. What is the root cause? You no, know? they call it as R C A, root cause analysis and development. So you need to understand why they're doing it and what is the approach. Why are they doing it? Is there any other approach to solve the problem? Because there's multiple solutions that you can use. So what is the optimum way to solve? Uh, come up with a solution. So these are things that you need to. Identify. That's what I've put in over here. No, uh, have devising a contingency plan and implementing it in the right manner. So this is something that you need to do a lot of practice. So try taking up a lot of problems during your time and try to brush up the skill. You no, know? so that's something that will evolve when you continue to do explore on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is one of the primary skill that you need to really equip yourself, irrespective of whatever job that you are going to get into. So this is one thing that I would like to highlight. Next comes your communication skills. 
when I say communication skills, it's both the written and the verbal, the oral skills. So uh, you're going to be writing a lot of emails, you're going to be writing a lot of policies or documents or various sorts. So you literally need not, uh, yes, Google is available for you to do certain level of copy paste. But again, you can't do literally do copy and paste for every different situation that you have, right? So you should be having that skill to write that. Communication, what I'm saying, it's not like just English. That's the person English based with the communication. What is communication is speaking your thoughts with clarity. So the person who's opposite, the person who's reading your email, the person who's listening to you when you're presenting, they should be able to understand what you're saying. And you should talk it in a way that is very crisp and it sends across the real essence of the message that you want to do. So that's the primary thing that I say when I say communication. So whichever language that you take, whichever it is, it is important how you communicate. Now, certain things you might be repeating again. So certain things doesn't really make sense to the context that you're talking or discussing within a group. So all those things are actually a part of the communication thing. So that's one thing that I would really like to emphasize. Of course, English is a primary language, global language, basically. So that is one of the reason we try to evaluate a little bit on the verbal skills, especially like this GD group discussions. Of course, they try to pull out other attributes of how how you are uh, giving opportunities to others to talk, or how is your thought process behind what you're trying to communicate. All these things are being evaluated as part of the communication problem. So it is very important for you to brush up on that. Uh, no, I, I understand like some time back, the industry used to look at a term called as MTI. MTI is mother tongue influence. We Tamil or Telugu, Malayalam, whatever it is. So, but again, these days, the global has accepted that and they're not looking at MTI at all. So, mother tongue influence is definitely not a thing. But again, you need to really communicate with confidence. So, how do you get the confidence when you really strong of whatever that you're talking, then you will have the com confidence. So, that's very important. So you need to try to uh, come up with various initiatives where you can try to improvise on your communication skills. You know, so probably having a small Toastmasters club, uh, having uh, probably picking up certain topics and having a group discussion between yourselves, trying to write certain emails and try to uh, yes. So there's a lot of tools that's available now, like tools like Grammarly and various things where you can really evaluate your grammar skills, your punctuation all those things that's something that you can really evaluate so this is again another area that you need to work on because you'll be working with multiple geography people you know people from different regions that is going to be there in different corporates or wherever that you're going to work with so that is one of the primary reason it is important for you to communicate in english so always over communicate that's still okay uh, build a rapport these are things that will really help you to uh, really work on this particular sector i would say so the next one is here adaptability and collaboration skills so how important it is very very important like how adaptable you are how uh, open are you to collaborate with people because there are a lot of ic roles ic meaning individual contributor roles but again it is important that multiple people within your teams and with stakeholders outside your company or wherever it is so it is very important for you to collaborate so that is something also is one of the important skill irrespective of whatever job that you're going to get into so this is again another area that you really need to do now probably some of the internship that you're doing some of the project that you're working with your friends how are you uh, playing as a team player so these are things that has been evaluated these days the tools that has been evaluated uh, using online no the attitude uh, various other tests it's all ai based you no know, artificial intelligence based where it is evaluating on a psychometric basis as well. There's a lot of psychometric uh, tools and uh, test things that's been introduced into the aptitude or your programming skills and all. So they literally pull out everything, every behavioral aspect of you, you know, that really say whether this person is a team player or he's a person who wants to really exaggerate or show himself at every point of time, or he doesn't accept uh, feedback. So all these attributes are being evaluated behind your scenes, so which you're not even aware. So it is very important that you focus on these aspects also for you to fetch the right job that you're really looking out for. So the next one is the technology. Uh, like, yeah, I think Nam introduced about my profile. So predominantly, I come from a lot of service and product-based company into the IT sector. So I have a little bit more experience and my previous company, Payora, I've been more into the campus side. Last six years, six plus years, and even last week, I wanted to showcase this so that it will be helpful. 
So these are some various tools that's available for you to make use of it. I think Sir also mentioned about it. Uh, Dr. Rajesh, the principal, also mentioned about it. Yeah. So these are various platforms that's available for you to make the best use of learning. So if in case you're in the second year or the third year, even if it's EC or whichever department you are, you really need to pick up these languages if you want to get into development or an IT sector. So I think these are many things that's available. The thing that's really coming up on the rise today is basically the coding boot camps. You know, the boot camps is something that is really coming on the rise. The reason because is you do a practical project, you know, a real POC, a proof of concept is something that you will be really doing. The GitHub websites, the developer websites, is something that's really helpful on the big time. And of course, YouTube, you know, YouTube. So that's again, these are the primary things which people use. Or uh, typically Gen Z, which is like you are basically the Gen Z that will be coming here. So they all predominantly use these tools, you know, so which gives you a more practical exposure for you to learn. So a lot of online courses through Udemy, Udacity, various things that's available. So you need to invest your time in it for you to learn. So that's one thing that I would like to highlight. A little bit more detail that you can focus on. For example, today the industry is expecting a lot of hiring to be happening more on full stack developers. Now earlier they used to have front end developers, back end developers, and they used to be a testing team. So today it's all become like one single person who's getting to do everything, you know, right from uh, the user story development to the release of the project. So that being said, full stack developers is really on the rise, which a lot of industries uh, are looking at. So if in case that's something that you are really interested, you can really focus on that particular sector. In fact, a lot of hiring managers are also, like I said, boot camps is one thing that they really feel uh, candidates are really much better as compared to someone whom we really need to take and uh, train because today the industries are not in a phase or they don't have the bandwidth to probably uh, have that kind of a classroom training. You know, today, for example, the companies that I have hired for, we have literally hired students and we have directly plugged them into the project. You know, So it's like on the job kind of a training, that's how it has been. So that's the level of expectation today corporates are expecting. So the other big plus of boot camps is again ability to learn new technologies, having a strong practical exposure because you are doing a, literally a proof of concept. You know the complete software development life cycle, not the SDLC, and eager to learn a uh, lot of new technologies and taking up additional responsibility. These are things that is actually that is something that's been expected today. So these are something that you also need to focus during your college period itself. So that's how you can really be job ready. So one additional input or insight that I would like to give is, again, you know, the languages, again, as Sir said, Python, you know, which is really on the rise. JavaScript is one thing which is also on the rise. You know, if you see the global uh, range, uh, it is really on the rise. So JavaScript, Python, and Java are some of the top three, which is really there on the rise. And when you come to the frameworks, because that is something also which is equally important. So React, JS, Angular, JS, and Django. Django is really on the rise because Django works primarily with Python. So that is one of the reason. The reason uh, the Django is actually uh, coming up on the rise. So these are something that you can really pick up if in case you are interested for development. So I thought I'll share this insight. So these are things that's available on Google. You can go Google it out. Why you can also start focusing and learn, uh, learning on some of these aspects, which will really help you to fetch the right job. So coming to the other aspects, I would say is your information use. Now today we have Google that's available on our fingertips. So again, there's a lot of information. Now, it is very important for you to uh, identify what is the right information, and which is the app one, and take it and then get into it. Now, so that's more important. So for you to organize and analyze and come to the right conclusion is very, very important. So invest the proper time. Try to leverage some of your experts, like within your college and in the industry as well. So that's again a very important important aspect which will really help you to identify your interest. Now, as sir also I think highlighted the same thing. You need to identify what is your strength. You know, so that's something that I always say at every point of time. Just because your friends or your weekly or Adanali you have to get into IT. No. You need to know what is your strength. For example, when I did my electrical and electronics engineering, I picked up a course in C, C Java and .NET. In fact I was good at it, but I that was not my passion. I was not so interested in it. So I kind of wanted to get into electrical line, but again, it didn't work out. So immediately I kind of picked up a passion into human resources. I did my MBA and now here I am. You now it's like 10 plus years into HR and I'm here uh, as a HR manager. 
So that's how it is. So you need to identify what is your strength, what is your passion. So that's again a very important aspect I would like to highlight. Next is your personality trait. You no, know? you as a person definitely play an important role. You no, know? in the interview, it's basically how you're selling yourself. You know, so that you're gonna get a small window of five to fifteen minutes, or probably thirty minutes. So how are you gonna pitch yourself? So those are things which is gonna really sell you to the job. <coughs> so professionalism and enthusiasm, enthusiasm is a very important aspect. So how professional? How are you really carrying yourself? So that's very important. How do you have the confidence? Like I said earlier, unless or the other, if you don't have stuff, if you don't have knowledge, you won't have the confidence to talk. So it's very important to do your homework, do your hard work, so as to have the confidence and present yourself in the right thing. Creativity, creativity is very important. Uh, so how presentable you are, you know, like in terms of your profile. So the same old profile, you can put it in a very creative manner. You know, probably today a lot of infographic resumes have come in. Today there's a video resume that is that. Today students are having their own website, they're having their own blog, they're having their own portfolio. For example, a designer has a Dribble account. Uh, likewise, a uh, developer has a GitHub profile, having a LinkedIn profile. So, be creative in whatever way in terms of presenting yourself. That's more important. Leadership skill. This is again a very important skill today. Some of the fresher graduates that we have hired within six months or one year, we have directly put them with the clients. No, so that is the level of confidence and the leadership qualities that we are looking at candidates that we are hiring today. So that's very important. Transparency, it's very, very important. Being honest of what you know. For example, you know something, say yes. If you don't know, say no. But yeah, I will put in that effort. I will I learn that and I'll come back to you within a week. So that is the level of transparency that we are expecting. Don't try to bluff. Don't try to beat around the bush and talk something which is not your strength. So be clear of what you know and what you don't know. So that's again a very important aspect that I would like to highlight as part of transparency. So these are some of the basic things that will be required for you to get a job in whatever it is. So that's one thing that I would like to highlight in terms of getting industry ready, I would say. So the next slide that I wanted to talk quickly about is some of the different roles because uh, many people have, uh, they don't have the exposure, probably they always assume IT now with software development. In IT also there are different roles that is that. So that's one of the reasons I just wanted to quickly give you a high level of what are different roles that's available. I've been a Sunapola, full stack developer, database developers, AI, ML, DevOps, engineer, data scientist, cloud, network security, everything is there. These are more into the development side. If development is something, sorry, enough and if development varlana, then leave it. Identify what is your strength. Probably testing is your strength. You know, finding faults. You know, so if that is your strength, go to testing, you know, automation testing. Then slowly you can evolve your role once you get into a job. So likewise, digital marketing is a very important aspect that's really coming up. Today, a lot of engineers are into digital marketing. So in respect of whatever engineering you've done, still, if it is, if in case you're interested in digital marketing, you can pick up that role. Now, because every industry, IT industry, construction, uh, automobile, or whatever sector you call, digital marketing is there because people consume digital mar marketing, right? A digital content in terms of social media, TV, videos, whatever you call it. There's a lot of digital content that's being consumed by everyone. So digital marketing is really on the rise. And definitely this is also a good pay job. Don't assume only that IT development guys are the ones who are getting good salary. These are people, though you might be starting slight over on this lab, but still you have the opportunity to grow in terms of salary wise in these roles. So it is important to identify your strength. You know, SEO is a search engine optimization, email marketing, uh, marketing auto automation. Here also you write some level of scripts and all in digital marketing. So there's a lot of roles into that. Likewise, analyst, which is more of like a research kind of a role where a lot of uh, companies, consulting companies like say Accenture, uh, KPMG or Pero, like uh, EY, a lot of companies are there into these analyst kind of roles. So you can get into a job into those areas as well. Likewise, networking, like sir also highlighted the cyber security, network security is really on the rise. So uh, I believe most of you are engineers, so you must be knowing the TCP, you know, the seven layers in TCP. So typically every layer has different devices, so you can really be an expert in any of these layers and that will also fetch your job into different networking companies also. Likewise, data scientists, motion and graphics, so that's again a big uh, job that is really being on the rise. You know, uh, graphic designer, motion graphics, like for example, the same PPT that I 
or probably was talking about in the last 15 minutes can be made into a video within one minute. Now, so that's the power of video. So a lot of people are consuming a lot of videos. So motion and graphics is something which is really being on the rise. So that's again another area that you can really take up if in case you're interested, storytelling, content writing. Customer success, if you're really good at communication, building a relationship with people, having some amount of technical uh, capabilities with communication skill, you can become a uh, sales role or a customer success profile. So likewise, there's a whole lot of job opportunities that is there. So where do I start? You need to kind of identify your strength, not try picking up anything. Uh, create an awareness. There's a lot of courses that's available that gives you an awareness of where to start, uh, probably uh, to identify which is your area or your passion. So that way you can do various courses, certifications and connect with those people so that you can really equip yourself for a job. So that's what is the last slide. Like I said, don't be content. No, don't be happy. Yeah, I know. See, I'm good at this. So don't be happy with it. Yeah, one other part that I missed is so if you see here in the language agnostic what does language agnostic mean today a lot of product or startup companies are okay to hire people who are really strong in any particular language for example if you're really strong in c plus plus so c plus is basically an ops oops language no object oriented language so if you're really strong in that particular language the product managers or the hiring managers are still okay to hire you for a java position the reason is because today, if you're really strong in one particular language, if you're thorough with it, you can easily pick up other languages. It's basically the algorithm and the framework that you need to really understand, right? So language agnostic is something which is really coming up on the rise. So that's something also that you can be strong on. For example, if you're good at Python or probably Java or a C, be thorough in it end to end so that at least that way you can really get to know the complete SDLC and you can really get into a job. So that's one thing that I wanted to say. So don't just be content with where you are. Continue to upskill yourself in everything. Learn and explore. Have a strong profile in terms of resume. Have a Build a portfolio, like I said. You know, if you're a designer, create a portfolio in Dribble account or uh, Behance, uh, which is part of Adobe. So there is different portfolios that you can create. You know, have a LinkedIn profile. Network with people. You know, create a strong network. Today, LinkedIn has a lot of experts. There are people who are willing to mentor and guide in various things and various roles so there's a lot of subject matter experts that's there on the linkedin so uh, do connections with those kind of people so that you can also get benefited also there's like websites like meetup i don't know if you have heard of it meetup is a platform where you can take part in some of the workshops where there are a lot of workshops where you can also uh, interact with a lot of industry experts and that way that will help you also to get a job into their own company or probably upskill yourself so that's more about it that's what i had so probably if there's any questions i, I would be glad to take it up. thank you sir you have exposed much clearly about exactly what is needed in the current competitive industry and how the students have to get prepared to meet the challenges in the industry recruitment process. Now students, you can ask any doubts to our resource person. Students, anybody having any doubts or any queries, please ask me. So if you have any doubts, probably you can put it even in the chat so that I can probably answer that from that also.
Okay, I think nobody is having any doubt. Emmanuel sir? Yes sir. Okay, let's start our session. Yeah, sure sir. Okay sir. So, good afternoon everyone. Okay sir, thank you. So, good afternoon everyone. Wait sir, wait sir. So, I am here to present the word of thanks for today Power Seminar. So, I would like to thank our guest Power Seminar speaker Sir Mr. Sri Emmanuel for uh, enlightening us with their knowledge. This power seminar is very interesting things. We gave deep insight to the topic and also related some interesting facts. So once again, I would like to thank the guests for taking uh, our time from their busy schedule and enlightening us with their knowledge. Thank you so much, sir. So next I would like to thank our uh, managing director uh, who is not there and our principal Dr. Rajesh for giving her permission to our organizing this power seminar. Thank you sir. And uh, I would like to thank our ICT academic relationship manager uh, Mr. Uh, Rajkumar and our team for arranging this power seminar to our college. Thank you sir. And and also thank to uh, Mr. Hasina Baby to giving the, uh, the introduction to the Chief Bust and the Master Ceremony for this power seminar. Thank you, Madam. So, and I would like to thank all faculty members and students for attending this power seminar. So thank, thank you all. Thank you. So okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the time. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Emmanuel, sir. Now, let us wind up the meeting. Once again, I thank all the students and faculty members. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.